We've all been playing the latest patch of Dragon Ball Fighters for some time now, and with Android 21 in the lab coat coming out soon, we're probably going to be getting a massive balance patch alongside with it. So in today's video, we're going to be going through the entire roster, throwing out some buff and nerf ideas. But I'm going to need your guys' help, so feel free to chime in in the comments down below. So starting off with Needs Love, characters that could really use some attention. At the top of the list, I'll be honest, I think Yamcha goes right up there. I think the fact that his Wolf Fang Fist got absolutely hammered over time is a shame, and the fact that a lot of people also have better projectiles and what he does really kind of kneecaps him. That's not to say that you can't do incredible things with Yamcha, it's just a lot of the cast does what he does and they do it better. We're also gonna go ahead and put Super Broly up there. His buttons are just kind of sluggish and there are workarounds for pretty much everything that he can do. I'm also gonna go ahead and put Videla on here because while they did go ahead and give some Videla attention in the latest patches, they, you know, she can still use a little bit of work. I feel like Videla is one of those characters where she has to work three times as hard as everybody else in order to get the same damage as other people's basic BNBs. And it's for a very similar reason I'm gonna go ahead and put Cooler and Frieza up here as well. It seems like lately they've been trying to figure out a solution to help Frieza out but I think literally just the core fundamentals of the game and how they work and how they've built some of their DLC characters just makes Frieza inept. For example he's supposed to be the roster's prime zoning character but yet Z Broly completely destroys him every chance he gets so Frieza becomes inferior just as a result of that. Now for Cooler specifically I'll be honest I don't play against enough Coolers to know how to help this character. At least some of the other characters I see more often. I never see anybody play cooler. So if you have any ideas for him, leave it in the comments down below. Now for the buff tier. Janemba I feel weird about, man, because Janemba players scare me. They, they really do. They're some of the most crazy Dragon Ball Fighters players you run into. With their Hell's Gate combos and like some of the weird stuff they be doing with teleporting, it, it's a little bit of a concern. But Janemba is one of those characters that definitely has some glaring weak spots. One of those being his extremely committal buttons. And while it's not necessarily bad, in order to have committal buttons, right? Like, every character needs some kind of downfall. Not every character can be flawless, but I feel like some of those things can be tweaked. Or just straight up, some of his stuff just doesn't feel all that worth it. Like, his ranged counterattack, while it certainly isn't horrible, I think it could definitely be better. I think it could be one of those things that definitely guarantees the hit no matter what. Something a little bit more similar to Jiren's physical counter. On the same note of characters having flaws and that being okay, Beerus is another one of those characters where I think his flaws can be tweaked just a little bit in his benefit. It's almost as if they designed him in order to have set play in a game that doesn't really prioritize or care about set play. You can put your orbs in different areas, and while sure this is great for Oki, don't get me wrong, and sure this is great for some combos, you're never going to really be full screen setting up orbs hoping in order to set something up. It's, it's just not really gonna happen against an opponent of equal skill level or better. There's a plethora of different options that players have in order to negate that kind of setup mentality in play. So Beerus ends up really just using his orbs for either Oki or mid combos. Now I'll be honest, I don't play against enough 17s in order to actually know how to help this character. So once again, it's another one of those that I'm going to need your guys' help in the comments down below. So from there, we're going to go into Adult Gohan, a character who really unlocks his potential, no pun intended, once he's able to actually unlock his potential by leveling up. Even after their most recent patch, it feels like he finally becomes a full character once you get a couple levels into him. So sometimes it doesn't even feel worth it. Sometimes it feels more like you're compromising doing the level one just for the sake of gaining levels as opposed to doing a level one because you actually want or need to. Krillin, all right, look, this one's a little bit more of a personal one. I hate this character's range. I'm of the firm belief that if Krillin two ages, he should throw a punch so hard it lifts him off the ground and into the air just a little bit. Give this man some height with his 2H, please, for the love of God. Super Baby 2 is I would like his assist call-in mechanic to be a little bit sped up. I don't think it's asking for too much in order to speed it up just a little bit, just a hair, nothing crazy. And when they do use it, Baby really isn't able to do much with it. So I'd like to see him gain a little bit of opportunity using the assists, and that's pretty much it. TN. This one's a little weird. I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really understand this character all that much because, I mean, I have him in the buff, but I don't necessarily want him buffed, per se. I just want him more fun. I want him to be a character people look forward to playing. You know, a character people are excited to play against. He's seen as being one of the most boring characters in Dragon Ball Fighters, despite being an extremely strong character. So once again, I don't necessarily want him buffed, per se. I just want him more fun. And GT Goku, well, I mean, all right, look, they kind of gutted this character we all hated him season two and he's still a pretty decent character don't get me wrong he's not trashed here or anything like that but like i think they can give him a little something back you know kefa players man they drive me crazy they, they really do for some reason she's one of the hardest characters for me to block and she has some of the dopest looking combos in my opinion so honestly i might as well put her down here if we're basing this on my own personal preference but this is gonna be another one of those characters that i look to you guys in the comments for some advice on because i don't play enough of her myself and i don't play against her enough in order to really know any substantial changes that 
couple players might want. Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta, despite being the strongest form of Vegeta that we have in the game, he, he doesn't seem all that strong, especially with base Vegeta completely overshadowing him in everything that Blue Vegeta does. So I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't even mind seeing Blue Vegeta's Big Bang attack be even faster than what it already is. That might be a little crazy, all right? That might be wild. Super Saiyan Vegeta was a character that everyone used to choose for his assist, but now people don't really choose him at all whatsoever, not even for the assist. And his assist is still good, the character's still good, but once again, I think it's another one of those situations where he got power crept something ferociously. And it's a shame to see because Super Saiyan Vegeta is kind of dope. So I would bring the things that he does well more in line with the other roster. As far as frames, damage, meter build, the whole nine yards bring all the stuff that everyone does better than him to the level that everyone you know does better than him maybe a little bit less now no change or tiny changes well i didn't realize how many characters would be in this tier honestly i could go ahead and take somebody like like bardock for example and put him in the buff tier because he suffers from a lot of the same stuff that super Vegeta suffers from where now we have a lot of characters that do what he does better than he does it and i feel like this is a problem that a lot of the older dlc characters suffer from where they were designed in such a time to be the elite at what they did, and then other DLC characters were released that kind of outperformed them. I almost wouldn't mind Bardock having a command normal. You know, maybe like a down-down special attack where he throws an energy ball similar to Android 21 that ends up having beam priority. Stuff like this, I think, can really freshen up the game. I think command normals are kind of something that they should think about adding for the entire roster. And maybe that's something they could even do for TN, where you can go ahead and make boring characters a lot more interesting with this. The Dragon Ball Ultra mod features new command normals for some of the roster. Stuff like this to extend combos and give you new options, new routes, can be something to spice up a character and help make them a little bit stronger. So not only do I feel like that's useful for Bardock, I feel like it's useful for most of the cast. Android 18, I'll be honest, she's really, really strong and I don't think she needs much changes. Android 21, uh, she could get some nerfs, 100% honest, but I'm an Android 21 main, so don't mind me, I'm gonna just place her here and let's forget about it. Captain Ginyu, <laughs> Captain Ginyu is one of my favorite characters. You do not need to buff this character anymore, he doesn't deserve it, he doesn't need it, leave the man alone. Alone, you also don't need to nerf him because he has to work extremely hard in order to get anything on anybody. Sure, once the character gets started, he's an absolute steamroll. Stopping him is almost impossible, but that's the trick. He's got to get started. If you don't let him get started, he doesn't do anything. Blue Goku is, is, I mean, the guy's Blue Goku, all right? I recently had a fight with this man where all he did was spam EX elbow and it worked, and I, <laughs> I wanted to throw my, my whole Xbox, all right? But I recognize that he's not one of the strongest characters in the game and he also doesn't really need to be any stronger than what he is. Having flaws is not necessarily a bad thing. Super Saiyan Goku, they, they, you know, they kind of hooked him up with his 2M again, and I feel like he's in a pretty good place. Base Goku is obscenely strong, and I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to have strong characters in the game so he can stay as he is. Zamasu's last patch was really nice to him, and he feels like an actual character now. It feels like we bought this DLC, and we never really got the full DLC <laughs> until recently. So I'm happy with where he is now. Hit, buff this man's ground counter, please, for the love of God. His air counter is incredible. But the dude's ground counter, oh my lord, that should be a guaranteed hit all of the time. No questions asked. Jiren, I honestly feel like they should kind of give him his counters back. Let us counter counter Dragon Rushes again. It's not one of those things that people really do on reaction anyway. It's something that they do by mistake. And it doesn't happen all that often to where it, I don't think it was really necessary to take it out of the game in the first place. Kid Buu, once again, another really strong character that I don't think needs to be changed. I think he's earned his spot. And I honestly think his base kit is so strong to the point where you really can't nerf him to begin with. Not unless you start tanking his frames, which I don't think is really fair. I mean, the guy's got key blast, his moves have pressure, it, it's just how he's built out of the box. The guy's a pressure monster, and I think that's okay. Master Roshi, nobody plays him, so nobody can. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. The character's really unique, he's really unorthodox, and if you're able to tank the time into practicing and learning this character and mastering him, then you deserve the strength that comes along with him. On the flip side, if you haven't practiced this guy, if you're not used to playing him, then you're not gonna do well with him. So he's simultaneously like S tier if you practiced them and F tier if you haven't practiced them. And I think that's okay. I think that's fine. That rewards time invested into a character and I think that's always a good thing. Another character that's very similar like that is Fat Boo. Fat Boo has a really awkward way about going about his combos and if you're not used to the character, you're gonna drop pretty much everything you do. However, if you've practiced him and you understand how he works, dude, the resets and the amount of pressure you can apply with this guy are well deserved. And a lot of what Fat Boo players get away with is honestly just because of other people's lack of character knowledge. It's not necessarily because the character is OP, it's because people don't know how to block or play against them. And that's not really the character
character's fault, so I don't think it's really worth nerfing him, and he doesn't really need any buffs if you ask me. And I feel exactly the same about Nappa. I love Nappa. He's easily the character I have the most hours in in this game, period, hands down. I don't want them to buff him because I don't want him to get on the developer's radar in order to nerf him in the future. So <laughs> he doesn't really need any buffs either. He's very similar to Captain Ginyu in the sense where if you get started, Nappa's an absolute wrecking ball. He can blow through an entire team's health bar with meter positive TODs extremely easily. And the amount of resets that he has access to are absurd. If you're not mashing, a lot of his resets straight up don't work. Go tanks, I don't play enough of them in order to really know how to change this character, to be honest. So if you guys have any suggestions, once again, by all means, please let me know in the comments down below. Piccolo, I felt like they really did him some justice last patch. They gave him a practically full screen standing heavy attack that isn't really commonly used, but it can be, especially with an assist. They also gave him some demon elbow love, which is also really appreciated. And Piccolo's always been a really strong character as he is, so I don't really think any nerfs or buffs are really in store for him. While Trunks, on the other hand, I'll be honest, I don't see the hype around this character. I don't feel he's as strong as people make him out to be. Sure, with Sparking in the anchor position, he could be a massive threat, but without those two things going for him, he's not really all that crazy. And I think he can be buffed just a little bit. For example, buffing his level 2 damage a pretty substantial amount would go a long way to helping this character out and actually give him some incentive to using the level 2. Not that the level 2 is completely useless, it can help you secure a kill when somebody has a sliver of health left. A little bit more damage I don't think would hurt all that much. Android 16, I'm not gonna lie, when I see an Android 16 player that's really good, it makes me feel like the character is overpowered and I have no idea what to do about it. But he seems like he's in a pretty honest spot. He seems like a pretty fair and well-balanced character. And I'd probably leave him as is. Now we got Goku Black. I kind of forgot to put him on the list. And he received a lot of love in the last patch. But I'll be honest, a lot of his patches didn't fix some of his issues. For example, his instant transmission is still highly telegraphed and very reactable. I feel like making it just a tiny bit faster wouldn't really hurt all that much. On the flip side, I would nerf his auto combo just a little bit. I would make either the range not as far, like he doesn't launch himself as far, or it would be a little bit slower on the third hit. Once again, I don't think it's necessarily bad for characters to have downsides. I feel like that's good. It leads to good counterplay. So nerfing his ridiculously blessed auto combo, I don't think is asking for too, too much. And this leads us to the next tier. Guys, please don't attack me in public if you see me. All right, UI Goku's got too much going for him. I'm gonna just come out and say it. While I don't think the character is necessarily overpowered, I don't think he's fun to play against. And that's the issue I have. I think a lot of his stuff is pretty easy to deal with for the most part, but once again, Again, he's just got so much going for him to the point where he's not fun to play against. It's just the fact that he dishes out so much damage for literally no effort at all, and he's got so many other things going for him to where his positives completely outweigh his downsides. So while I am all for strong characters being in the game, I think Yuai Goku can certainly use a little bit of tweaking to give his downsides a little bit more downside. If Super Broly can't even throw a basic punch without dislocating a shoulder, then Yuai Goku should have at least a slower auto combo some way. If I've literally been hit out of my barrier with Android 18, then UI Goku shouldn't really be able to spam quarter circle back heavy attack to infinity and beyond until it finally works. And also, can we stop this nonsense with some of his attacks hitting behind him when they definitely shouldn't? People complain about Android 21's jumping heavy attack hitting on both sides when her animation at least looks like it should hit on both sides, when UI Goku's light attack hits on both sides, his beam hits on both sides, and I've been hit on both sides by other attacks that I can't even recall. And none of those animations look like they should be hitting on the opposite side. Another change I'd probably make to UI Goku is make some of his moves more punishable. When you block a level one, don't let him move so far back. If he does this quarter circle back heavy attack, you should be able to guarantee punish that. It should take way too long for him to recover and he shouldn't be able to spam it. And the window in order to 2H, his wake up option should be increased. I've seen pro players, myself, and other content creators see the wake up option coming from a mile away and the 2H still doesn't hit. Cell, I'll be honest, I'm completely okay putting Cell up here. I don't mind Cell all that much. I think he's a really strong character and I think he's well balanced. I think the pressure he gets, he really has to work for and he earns, right? You're not gonna have a bad Cell player applying pressure the same way a bad UI Goku or a bad Vegito player or a bad Team Gohan player would apply pressure and it still works. With Cell, you gotta actually know a little bit about the character. So I feel like honestly he could be up here and that's perfectly fine. Gogeta used to suffer from really slow buttons and admittedly some of his buttons still are pretty sluggish. But man, this character's ability to snipe me with down medium attacks, <laughs> it seems like he's got a homing device on my ankles <laughs> and I'm tired of it. This might be a little bit of personal preference on this one. Honestly, it might be more fair to put him here, but you guys let me know what you think about it. Teen Gohan sometimes feels impossible to challenge on half of his pressure and I feel like it could be a lack of character knowledge on my part. I'm completely willing to admit that, but I don't think his auto combo needs a 
homing device. <laughs> like the character will catch you almost just about anywhere on screen. I know the word auto is in the name auto combo, but that doesn't mean it should automatically work. All right, in all honesty, while as annoying as it is in order to block Team Gohan, I feel like his pressure is just a little bit too easy. I feel like you don't really have to work all that hard for it. And it's too easy in order to bait somebody into challenging your pressure. That way you can get a big fat punish on him. And maybe that's okay. It's completely possible that that, that should be in the game and that's fine. Now for base Vegeta, I'm really curious to see what you guys think needs to be nerfed about him or if he needs to be nerfed at all. Personally, I'd be 100% willing in order to leave him up here. Just with tiny, tiny nerfs, nothing too, too crazy. I think it's okay that he's one of the strongest characters in the game. He's got a lot of options. He's got a lot of high, low mix, a lot of left, right mix, and a lot of great, great pressure that you can do with him. So probably the only nerf I'd really make to him is nerfing the rocket kick just a little bit. Whether it's distance or whether it's frames, I would nerf something about the rocket kick. And I would do it to a really tiny degree, nothing too, too crazy. I think he's one of those sensitive characters where if you mess with him a little bit too much, then you run the risk of dropping him down. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta, I'm about to nerf this man in a way you didn't expect, all right? I don't care about his level seven, I think that's fine. But what I would nerf is the recovery time on his EX Lariat. And also, the biggest thing I would nerf is this dude has got to stop hitting me <laughs> when I'm behind him. I can't tell you how many times I've gotten nailed by this dude's light attack on literally the opposite side. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. I don't understand how that works. I don't like it. And that's definitely got to change. On the flip side, I would buff Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta in a specific way. I'd give the guy a whole new level one animation. That's how I would buff him, man. Because let's be honest, we were all disappointed when we saw Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta's level one animation. Vegeta, one of the only things he has going from is his light attack. So it's hard in order to sit here and be like, nerf his light attacks, although we all hate Vegito's light attacks but characters need strong features. As to where UI Goku's got so many different options and base Vegeta's got so many great different options and Cell's got so many great different options and Kid Buu's got so many great different options and base Goku, Vegito's got just a few. And the options he does have, he's incredible at those options. So as much as I hate fighting this character, I don't want to take his first light attack away from him. We're just going to decrease the range of the last part of his auto combo just a little bit. We can increase the speed of his split finger shot by just a couple of frames, nothing too, too crazy. But now we're going to increase the startup frames for his jumping special attack. Maybe you can make a case for going ahead and increasing the startup frames for the first light attack by a couple of frames, because right now it's only a seven frame startup. I don't think those changes are all that crazy. Now for Z Broly, the character some people believe to be the best character in the game. I don't think this guy needs any armor on his normal attacks. On his special attacks, sure, he can have his armor, but armor on the normal attacks is ridiculous. And I know, I know people are going to say, oh, well, he's Broly. It's like the movie, you know, so on and so forth. And I understand that. I get that. But I feel like giving this guy armor on his normal moves allows Broly players to make mistakes that other characters just could not get away with. And he doesn't get punished for it. It feels like they get away with making bad plays that they otherwise would not have gotten away with if it was any other character. But see, Broly on the other hand, no, nah, he's he's fine. In fact, it'll be you who gets blown up. As far as his command grab, I'd leave it the same. I know people say it's unreactable, but guys, that pretty much is how I would change every single character in Dragon Ball Fighters in the next patch. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. How would you change some of these characters? If you're new here, feel free to subscribe. We upload content every single day. But on that note, I'm going to head on out of here. I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. Thank you for watching.